here i have planned to give you a couple more examples to get used to the notion of set builder form so this is my set builder form given and i'll have to calculate what a complement is so it's not explicitly mentioned that i'll have to give it in the builder form or roster form so we might choose whatever that's convenient for us but we'll have to find a complement so a is given as the set of all y's such that y is an alphabet and so this comma means and it has to obey both the properties so y is an alphabet as well as y does not belong to a e and i this little set over here which says that y is not equal to a y is not equal to e and y is not equal to i but y can be any other alphabet and we'll have to find a complement so our set of a's would be i'll write this in red so set of a the, the set a would be all the letters in the alphabet except a e and i so maybe these are some letters but i am not concerned with that i am concerned with a complement so a complement would be all the letters that are not these red ones so they will be precisely a e and i so even without writing a in the roster form we found out by the set builder form of a that a complement is equal to the set a e and i so this this turned out to be an easy exercise we didn't have to calculate a separately so another example i'll give you uh, what i've written down here is uh, so before because in the last video i did a lot of examples with numbers so here i thought i'll give you some alphabets as example so again set a this is a different set a is uh, the set of all x's such that x is a letter in little and b is a set of all y's such that y is a letter in in the word i am not writing the whole thing in the word title and i'll have to see what a and b are in roster forms so what is a so a can be any of these letters so it can be l it can be i it can be t and i won't write t again because we don't repeat things in a set it's just a collection so there's l again and there's e so a, a can be any one letter among all these four letters or or x x can be any one among all these four letters so a is the set we have l i t e and what is b well b is uh, the set t i uh, and t again so we we'll leave that out l e so b is this set so do we see something interesting here we see that a is equal to b right why is a equal to b because given any x in a or i'll i'll use a different letter just to differentiate between this this x and what i'm going to write so if given a p an element in a i can prove that p belongs to b you take any element from a and you prove that p belongs to b it is also an element in b so that is true this holds this is true and given any element in b i can prove likewise it belongs to a and the first statement essentially so this is also true the first statement essentially means that a is a subset of b because given any element in a it's in b and the second statement means b is a subset of a so when these both happen together we saw that a is equal to b this this was one of the ways to define a equal to b and you also verify using this method that a is equal to b a is a subset of b as well as b is a subset of a so these both sets turned out to be equal even though the set builder form suggests otherwise these both sets turned out to be equal so now that we have done and we are done with alphabet examples let us go to some something interesting say my set p 
is equal to the set of all 1 by n such that n is a natural number. So what about this set? How do we represent this as a roster form? And my question is to find the minimum and maximum. Well, So the maximum, I mean maximum element in the set, maximum and minimum. So I, I, don't, I don't think maximum and minimum needs defining, but anyway, if one, two, three is a set, then my minimum element would be one and my maximum element would be three. So this is what I mean by maximum and minimum elements. And I thought, I, I think that should have been clear from the beginning, right? So find the minimum and maximum of the set P. So to do that, let us just first write it in the roster form. So what is P? It is a set of all 1 by n's where n is a natural number. And I can just start plugging in natural numbers for n. So I can write this as 1 by 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4, 1 by 5, and all other sets. So this set is an infinite set because there are there's the, the number of natural numbers are infinite so this set will go on forever and one by one i can even write it as one so i can write this as one and others i'll just leave it just so so how do we find the maximum element first well it happens it, it's not always necessary but here we have that we have already written the set in some order 1 by 2 is greater than 1 by 3, 1 by 3 is greater than 1 by 4, 1 is greater than 1 by 3. So as the denominator increases, the fraction decreases. We divide 1 into that many more pieces. So I think the maximum element, it would be safe to say that it is 1. So maximum is 1. Maximum of P, I'll write the whole thing. Maximum of P is equal to 1. So this element 1 and what about the minimum well, minimum of p well if someone comes up to me and says that minimum is some 1 by k for k may be any natural number if someone comes up to me and says this well what do i do then i give him a k plus 1 and i know that 1 by k plus 1 would belong to the set because 1 by k does, k is a natural number, so this implies that k plus 1 is also a natural number and 1 by k plus 1 would belong to the set and 1 by k plus 1, what do we know, that it is, it has to be less than 1 by k, right? So, if someone gives me a minimum number, I can give him another number in the set that is even lesser than the minimum. So, which is to say that the minimum does not exist does not exist this technique of proving is really beautiful and really interesting and we use this very very often this uh, could be called as a proof by contradiction but we'll not get into all those details just for now this is a very interesting proof for us so given any 1 by k you could always find an element lesser than 1 by k and hence i conclude that the minimum element 1 by k does not exist Right? It does not exist. Right. So let us go to our last example, our example 4. And this would lead us to something new. Uh, so I am naming the set i now, uh, the reasons of which would be clear in some time. So i is equal to the set of all x's such that uh, 0 is less than x and uh, my x is less than or equal to 2 i am writing this in a single statement so and and x is, is belonging to a real number x belongs to a real number so what will this set look like so this statement i have just written 0 is less than x or less than or equal to 2 uh, actually means two separate statement uh, it, it means that 0 has to be less than e less than x and as well as x should be less than or equal to 2 and if you had to spread this further, this itself means two things. X is equal to 2 or X is less than 2. And this 0 is less than X and X is less than equal to 2. So this is and and this is or. One should note these things. 
so anyway we have done quite a lot of problems like these so we kind of uh, we we kind of take it for granted that uh, zero less than equal to x or less than equal to something means the same for everyone but we have to define it properly uh, anyway what does this roster form look like how do i list the element elements of the set explicitly what do i do uh, first let us think of the set and and because x is a real number and it's less than equal to something or greater than something the easiest way for me to visualize real numbers is in a real number line right we have been doing a lot of things with number lines so maybe number lines could help us uh, and how do i say which elements are uh, lying in the number line well i maybe i i use a line on top to indicate what happens but i'll have to be careful because all these numbers are included i know x is lying between 0 and 2 but when it comes to 2 2 has to be included so i draw a circle on top of it and i shade it just to indicate that 2 is in my set and i draw an empty circle on top of 0 just to say that 0 is not included so this means 0 does not belongs to the 0 does not belong to i and this means that 2 belongs to i these are just symbols to denote what i mean uh, we will formalize all these notations in a further lecture so you need not worry about it probably in the next lecture we'll get to the uh, depiction uh, the diagrammatic depiction of these things but for now i think i have an idea of what the set is so maybe i can try to write it down so maybe i can say i is equal to so where do i start so now that's the problem we have i could I, I cannot start from zero because zero does not belong to the set and even if say i start in the descending order i start from two and i'll have to write one here but what about all the elements in between so what about 0 0.5 or, or, or 1.5 you know this element or what about 1.25 or 1.75 and 1.9999 how many ever nines you want so all these elements so there is no next element to 2 in our list so we see that it's not possible to list the elements in the way we are uh, used to listing these so we use a very specific notations notation uh, a set of notation and this leads to something called intervals so an interval between 0 and 2 will have a specific notation maybe i give you uh, that it looks something like this where 2 is included and 0 is not but we will look at this in our next lecture so see you there